Hi everyone, uh, my name is Stephen Gaynor and I am the Community Coordinator for SocialBizUG.org and I am delighted today to have someone I think a lot of you guys will know, Mr. John Head. Uh, John, how are you today? I'm doing well. It's uh, summer finally arrived in the Midwest, so uh, we're enjoying some heat out here. Yeah, after this winter I think we all needed it. Um, <laughs> So, uh, John, I, I know you're a busy person, so I'm going to just get the interview started. Um, let's start with your elevator resume. Um, what do you do? Who do you work for, if you can say? Uh, just give me a basic job description, if you would. So, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John Head. I am a business development manager and evangelist at PSC Group. We are located uh, in the Chicago area, both the suburbs of Schaumburg and downtown with an office in Kansas City. And in the ICS space, people know us as a, a, a strong and longtime IBM partner, uh, lots of uh, four IBM champions in the XPages space. We have a Verse kickstart at verse.pselistens.com and a lot of other things that we do. But when we kind of pull back from the ICS space, we're actually a, a full service business technology consulting firm, basically a systems integrator. And what our secret sauce is, is that we're, 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 we're technology agnostic. So as, as strong as our IBM practice is, we have a, a group that does Microsoft uh, technologies. We have an open source team uh, and infrastructure and advisory services. And one of the things that we're spending this year on is, is instead of talking about technology, talking about solutions and methodologies. So I spend my time talking about application modernization. And I have at Connect at Lotusphere given, and user groups given sessions on application modernization around X pages. And at the uh, Digital Experience Conference in Atlanta in June, I did that with call application modernization around uh, uh, digital experience and portal and I've done it around uh, SharePoint. So I'm really focused on what we consider to be one of the great uh, issues around application modernization and how do we help our customers modernize right, uh, their business applications that their users end up using every day. So uh, and for this audience, most of you know my former life where I was a consultant here at PSC. Uh, I started with integration of notes in uh, SmartSuite, moved on to Office and Open Office, and uh, was around at the beginning of the XPages revolution. And then we hired smart people like Mark Rodin and Brad Balasadis and Kathy Brown and Toby Samples and the rest of the folks here and I decided I was a better talker than coder so um, the interview will be <laughs> the interview will be good but uh, I think it was everybody's uh, uh, everybody agreed that I, I had uh, better strengths than uh, than swinging code and uh, so here I, we are I, I don't know, I'll bet, uh, my guess is that you're selling yourself just a little short. Uh, <laughs> I figure you, you probably do actually know what you're doing. Uh, so not anymore, I'm, I'm pretty happy to say I've given up those days, but uh, yeah, I, I, I wasn't bad, but when you hire, you hire experts, you, 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 you're, you can do things like find everybody's strength and focus on it versus having to, you know, fight with other things like that. So I'm really lucky. I love my job. I get to work with customers. I get to help find, uh, you know, areas that, for improvement, come up with solutions. And I have the best team that I've ever seen uh, in the industry behind me. So every day is a, is a real joy around here. That sounds just awesome. I, I love hearing that. Uh, I, I where I work, I, I'm sure it's not on your level, but uh, I, I work with some awfully good people, and I, you know, it, it makes a big difference. Um, so, speaking of work, uh, can you describe a recent challenge that you had and what you did, what you did to overcome it? So, my job day to day is a little bit different than probably most of the people who who listen to this. Uh, I I am. My job is to go out and talk with uh, folks who have business problems and how we can help them. And one of the issues that I often face is 
we can identify the problem, we can identify a great solution, we can document and architect it, but then we have to actually get the paperwork signed. And for me, you know, that 90% of, of finding a project for the team here to work on is actually fairly easy and fun. The 10% details of, of, you know, procurement and all of those pieces. And one of the things that we have found with one of our largest clients is when procurement and paperwork is done for email, you just lose so much of, of the conversation. So we actually had a phone call, put everybody on the phone from both sides, walked through it and solved the problem in just a few minutes versus what was a multi-day email thread. And I think we all talk about social and you know moving uh, communication from email threads to other places, but I think sometimes we forget the, the, the value of direct communication, whether it's a phone call or in-person meetings. So my recommendation for everybody is uh, texting, chatting, you know, email are great things, but don't forget the power of a, of a direct conversation. Excellent. All right. All right. Um, now I'm, I'm going to uh, change just a little bit. Uh, normally my um, member of the month interviews, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to change just a little bit. I had posted a blog a while back um, uh, talking about DevOps because someone had asked me about it and I really didn't know anything and I started asking around and everyone said, oh, you need to talk to John Head. So, <laughs> Uh, so it seems like that DevOps is the next big thing, right? So can you explain a little bit about what DevOps is and what it means in the workplace? Yeah. So, so and before we get to the definition, I'm going to take a step back. So I, I don't consider myself to be a DevOps expert, I think. But what we do and what our customers do, DevOps is affecting. So I think, you know, when you take us, when we, we, we start at the beginning and we look at, you know, a new world, and that new world is the, you know, business velocity has completely accelerated. We think about 10 years ago and the process of a new product development, whether it's a car or a piece of software or a pharmaceutical drug. And that could take two to three years. And in today's world, sometimes they're trying to do that in, in, in months. And part of that is, is disruption. You know, I can't think even five years ago that I thought a company could disrupt the cab industry or the fact that a software company now does more hotel nights via a web app than the, most of the traditional hotel vendors, right? And in that case, I'm talking about Airbnb. Or a product like Etsy has changed the craft industry to being a worldwide marketplace. So we have to take that velocity and because the business velocity and the fact that CEOs list speed in innovation as their number one and number two you know, business drivers for 2015, and we have to realize that the rest of the business is not caught up with that. And that's not just you know, putting it on the, the, the application arms that's you know, that goes all the way down to operations and all of those pieces. And what DevOps is trying to do is, is align business, operations, and development, bring them closer together and get them on the same speed pattern. So there's a, 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 a really good definition that IBM has in, it. funny enough, IBM's uh, DevOps for Dummies book. I'll, I'll give you the link so you can share it. But I think this is a, a good high-level version, right? So, um, and I'm, I'm going to just read it here so I get it accurate. So the principles of DevOps is develop and test against production-like systems, deploy with repeatable, reliable processes, monitor and validate operational quality, and amplify feedback loops. So that's IBM's version. And our version, the PSC kind of, you know, if I put it in our language, it's really processes that help automate testing, deployment, monitoring, and communication. And if you think about for every thing about software, it should have some major impact. 
Right. So what one of the challenges here is that as if business is moving really fast, but software is taking six months to deploy something, those aren't in line, right? And the if you think about uh, I'm sure everybody who's listening is familiar with agile development. Agile and DevOps are connected because DevOps enables agile development to take place and take place not just within the development silo, but including everybody in that process even better. And it's also then the tools and all of the things that make these processes or methodologies, whatever word you want to use, it actually allows you to implement them. It's not a switch. You can't say, I didn't do DevOps yesterday and I'm doing it today. It's not something you implement overnight. Uh, and nobody really has a firm checklist that says, if I do these things, I'm a DevOps shop, right? This isn't like ITIL or you know even some of the old standard stuff. It's really about trying to implement processes to make this process better. Now, for the developer, what it really comes down to is uh, automated unit testing and continuous deployment. And what that really means is the, the taking away the manual testing pieces of software development and the ability to get those fixes through development into test, into production in a continuous manner that doesn't require the company to shut down. And so if you think about what we do is we write software, we test it, and then it gets handed off to somebody in operations and operations tests it, and then they deploy it, and then they monitor it, and then they bring business into it to use it. And then business says, this is broken, or that needs, this is red, it needs to be green, right? It's that, it's kind of a circle and a, and a feedback loop. And it's about automating that process. And what I'm, what I think the, the real strength here is, as we start to move to new platforms, uh, you know, using the model view controller look, platform as a service, it allows us to kind of move in these spaces. Most of the notes, domino, X page developers really aren't used to automated deployment, continuous de development, and some of these other things probably mostly because the platform doesn't make it very easy to do those things. In some cases, it actually prevents it. Oh, okay. Um, all right, well then, along those lines, now, uh, I'm not going to ask you to name names, um, but um, can you share any examples of where DevOps has really made some improvements? Sure, we have a, 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 a international company who's a customer and they had a resource scheduling software product they had bought. They had been running a previous version for about two years because they hadn't been able to get the new version into their production environment and because their changes and the fix packs, is the, fix packs wouldn't actually allow them to deploy it in a manner because it would disrupt business. So what we did is we took quality assurance or their, their the fancy name for their testing team, right? Their operations and their development. We took a couple people from each team and put them into a team that ran agilely. And they took this two year old, old version of an implemented software package and have implemented the new version migrated over all their customizations and have gotten it to a point now where they can do uh, apply patches and fixes within three weeks, right? And while for a lot of folks who understand DevOps, three weeks is a long time, but for them, three weeks is a monumental change. One of, so they measured it by how much time was a full-time employee spending on this process, and that reduction was, was really large. One of the things that I always struggle with is people always ask, so what's the return on investment? What's the dollar savings? DevOps is really hard to measure in pure dollar savings. We can measure it in time, we can measure it in quality, but then actually saying what's my bottom line savings is really difficult. So I, I always tell people be really careful there. Um, that's not really a where you're going to get your savings. What you're going to see is your process is going to get better, your speed to deployment is going to drastically increase, and your business users are going to get the tools that they need within a time frame that actually allows them to be productive. 
All right. Um, all right, uh, you're going to have to forgive me this next question, but uh, I, I'm an, an old Lotus Notes Domino developer. Uh, can you give so me I. an example <laughs> of how uh, uh, DevOps could work in a Notes Domino shop? So the idea of DevOps, right, is to bring what has traditionally been split development operations and quality assurance bring them together so so let's you know take a journey back i started working with notes 20 ish years ago and i was the only person in my company right it was a single note this is before domino right so we're talking 3.3 .3 is when i really got involved uh you know have been working on it since two but 3.3 .3, had a domino server i managed mail i man i built the applications i put them in i managed the server i did all of that as a single person at a small company and that's you know over the the past 10 years we've split that you have an operations team this is these are the folks who own the servers and they administer the servers and they handle security and then i have development and you don't want your developers having access to production servers because developers are evil and we write code and we bring servers down I'm thinking of an old Paul Mooney, uh, Bill Bakken, worst practices skit, you know, of where this is the story. And I agree. But in the notes world, while you can do that, a single person can write code, go to a template, refresh a database, test it, refresh it in a production environment. And so we don't have DevOps. Right? DevOps requires continuous deployment and automated testing because it separates the your logic from your code from your data. Notes Domino doesn't do that. Xpages really doesn't do that. Now if you think about some of the work that uh, my colleague Mark Roden has done blogging about Angular, you know, Angular and the mean stack were really designed around automated testing and continuous deployment. So you can do some more of that there. Uh, to add some feel to the JavaScript versus Java world, if you want to do DevOps in the X pages world, you have to really move to 100% Java world. Not saying that that you should do that, but you know, even when we look at Bluemix, the experimental stuff that has come out in the past week or two, they split the design and the data into different resources. The problem with Bluemix is, is it it's not true DevOps because when you do a build, it actually brings them together in, in, in the deployment. So in a true notes domino environment, DevOps is actually really difficult because the areas of, of greatest impact is that not doing manual testing and the automated continuous deployment, which means a fix and a minor version and a major version that's happening. You know, Etsy does somewhere between between 10 and 30 releases a day, right? That could be a bug fix, it could be a color change, it could be a major new feature. We can't do that in the notes domino world, right? So what we have to do is find the areas that we can improve. Um, we actually have what we a five-step chart from initial to optimize the DevOps inside your organization, right? And that's it starts with you know you don't have any automation, you don't have uh, uh, repeatable processes, you have bad communication. So in a notes domino environment, and even in X pages environment, fixing the communication between business development and operations, that's a thing that you can really, you can spend some time on and can have some, some effect. And you can start to look at how do we monitor and uh, these applications in operations. How do we know that this change I made inside development, we may have said, hey, it's only red to green, but green, and this is for the developers out there, I know this isn't true. I'm using it as an example, right? Green is twice as big. Well, now that we've put it into, operation, into production, we can monitor that the piece that's green is now twice as big and is causing a massive slowdown. You have to be able to do that. And there's some third-party tools that do better monitoring. You can do reverse logging. But if you really, really want to do DevOps in a notes Domo environment, you, really, you have to look outside the environment. And that's, it's not just a notes domino thing, you know, quote unquote DevOps in a SharePoint world doesn't work because it's the same thing as notes domino, it's self-contained. I can build components that are loaded into SharePoint and do that through a DevOps process, but I'm not doing it per se that, that manner. If you really want to do automated testing and uh, continuous deployment, you know, 
that's why the startup world is using Python and Angular and, and, and even some of the .NET stuff that's going on. So it's, it's, at this point, if your organization is talking about DevOps, looking at the other things inside the uh, IBM stack and some of the other options out there is probably the best route to go. If you really want to stay in the XPages world is you're not going to get to continuous deployment and you're not going to get out of manual testing, but you can at least do unit testing in a more prescriptive, repeatable manner. It'll never be automatic. And then fix the communication. Wow, all oh, excellent. Um, all right, you know, John, I could actually uh, continue uh, talking about this most of the afternoon. I find you fascinating, if you don't mind my saying. Um, however, this is the end of the interview and the most important question. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. What is your favorite movie and why? So I've been thinking about this since you uh, prepped me with this question, and I'm going to first say that my favorite movie is not what I consider to be the best movie, right? I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to separate quality from the, from pure emotion, um, and it, 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 it kind of goes back to, so my favorite movie, not what I consider to be the best movie, is Star Wars, and mostly because of, of memories. So it was the first movie I ever saw. My dad took me to see it in the theater. I was in diapers. I had the first toys they put out, uh, and it started a trend where my dad and I actually saw A New Hope, Empire, uh, Return of the Jedi and the special editions all together on opening night. So part of me is really looking forward to the new movie coming to November. It's also the first one I'm not going to see with him, so it's kind of one of those moments. But I also think Star Wars kind of did something to culture that I, it doesn't happen very often. I think the last time it happened is when Tolkien changed fantasy with Lord of the Rings. And, you know, I've, and I had this conversation with uh, my father a lot was, when he was a kid growing up, he wanted to be a baseball player or a firefighter, right? And he, those are things that something that a person could do with skill and, and effort and some luck. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a bounty hunter who caught the good guy and spoiled the movie. I wanted to be Boba Fett. Right? And that's kind of, and that was really not possible, you know? We had, in the, how many odd, almost 40 years since the movie's come out. We're not in space. We really don't have intergalactic bounty hunters, you know. So uh, we don't have laser guns. But so for me, it, it not only did it form a great relationship, but it also, I think it changed the way that I, as a three, five, you know, three, four, five-year-old was actually dreaming about wanted, what I wanted to be. And then I grew up and said I wanted to be an architect. I went to school to be an architect, and doom happened, and now I'm in software. So, it, you know, it all makes sense, right? Absolutely. And, John, that's one of the, that's one of the best answers I've heard in a while. I, I, I know exactly what you mean about, you know, spending quality time with your dad. It means a lot. Yep. Um, all right. I'm afraid that's all the time we have. John, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We really do appreciate it. And Thanks. everyone out there, I hope to see you on the site. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone.